okay uh, uh dear uh, brothers uh, we thank our lord uh, for giving this wonderful privilege to study his wonderful words of life so today we're going to study a important topic about uh, uh, man and uh, what man is composed of so before studying uh, how man was created and what man is composed of uh, we will just uh, look into some views of the various other religion what various other religion believe about uh, the creation of man and what actually man is composed of then uh, <clears throat> later we will see what the bible uh, says uh, you see what the bible says about uh, uh, the creation of man and uh, so now before going to this one uh, let us see what does the scientist believe about the creation of man you see the scientist uh, believe that uh, man was created from a protozoa a amoeba and uh, slowly developed uh, into a you see a monkey a chimpanzee and later into a ape and slowly uh, uh, man developed from the stone age uh, into iron age and uh, you see uh, now he has come to the computer age and future will be going to the golden age and after death uh, what happens uh, if we ask uh, this uh, scientist they tell that uh, see man transcends uh, from uh, uh this uh, earthly life to uh, you see spiritual life uh, so it transforms uh, as he is transforming from a ape uh, you see and a monkey uh, to from a stone age to iron age uh, and so on he transcends from that uh, <clears throat> fleshly uh, nature to spiritual nature okay this is what the science uh, the scientist uh, you see they believe okay what about the other religion see various other religions have a various other concept they believe that uh, god uh, is a supreme soul you see and he is a supreme creator he has created uh, everybody so in his image uh, they were created so god is a soul is a supreme soul that's why they call parama atma parmatma anyway see so god is a supreme Uh, so hence god uh, when he created man he has uh, you see put uh, his important part uh, in man and that is a uh, is a soul so when man dies you see man dies but uh, his soul doesn't die because that was from god and as a man dies this soul goes and joins to god you see that is the way that the soul receives moksha the attain uh, you see uh, that moksha the entire complete redemption when they go and join back to god so the soul comes from god returns back to god and uh, when uh, this soul is on earth uh, this undergoes a purification so what are the steps of purification if you see dear brethren this has a uh, seven steps of purification you see from uh, birth till death the soul gets reformed 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 refined and ultimately at the death uh, you see uh, the soul will attain different uh, you see uh, what do you say reincarnation you see therefore uh, they believe that generally that uh, man has uh, seven uh, you see janmas you see seven reincarnation so whatever you do in the past life uh, will affect on this life so in the current life uh, if you are living a very you see awkward and a miserable life and a pathetic and a bad life you will be having a you see effect in the next life where you will be born as a donkey or is a monkey or a dog or various other things and all so this is what the various other religion believe you see therefore uh, you see they believe that a uh, man after death uh, you goes into become an animal or animal uh, to man you see therefore uh, people tell no if somebody asks what you should give water or else in the next uh, uh, janma you will become a dog and nobody will give you water also therefore Uh, when somebody dies uh, they uh, do the rituals and they offer food to uh, for this crows uh, because they think that the, the crow is a form of their uh, uh, dead departed soul and they are coming and eating it uh. so these are all the beliefs uh, you see uh, in the various other religion okay now what is the belief uh, about uh, christianity you see the christians also believe much similar thing but in a different way the thing that as soon as a man dies uh, his soul comes out from the body it goes and stand before christ uh, and judgment and jesus will open the book of life and uh, read everybody's sin and if he's a sinner if he's a committed sin 
then he will go to hell. Then uh, if the person is a good person, then he will go to heaven. So ultimately, uh, everybody uh, comes to the same conclusion. The soul doesn't die and soul goes to hell or heaven. So <clears throat> generally, they believe that a uh, man has a soul and uh, this soul uh, is, uh, you see, uh, held up uh, in a prison uh, inside this body. You see? And uh, when man dies, actually, he is relieved uh, from this prison and uh, you see the soul attains moksha. Okay. If uh, this is the case, uh, that means if a man uh, a soul uh, is, uh, you see, uh, captured or uh, uh, captivated uh, in a prison, then uh, actually man attains uh, real peace when he dies, then uh, why do we take medicines? You see, why do we take medicines? Why do we go and admit uh, our uh, beloved ones when they are sick to the hospital? You see, uh, why do we do it? Uh, we should resign, no? Anyway, they are approaching death. So it's very good that they, they attain the Mosha, their soul get salvation, their soul gets released. They get eternal freedom. You see, they should be happy, no? But instead of being happy, uh, even small, small, you see, sickness, it causes so much of headache for the family members. And even if somebody dies, you see, we see that people cry rather than rejoice. If soul is going to heaven, if soul is getting that uh, peace uh, and uh, salvation and uh, moksha and shanti, now why cry when somebody dies, dear brain? You see, if uh, this is the condition of uh, departed souls, then why there is a concept of a resurrection in the Bible? The Bible says that uh, a day will come when all the dead are going to come back to life. Uh, then if the soul actually doesn't die, if soul is already here and there, then why there is a resurrection? For that one, somebody people will tell, no, brother, your resurrection means not. No, the soul is there. No, it will be roaming here and then. But when the resurrection happens, the body will be resurrected and the body again will reunite uh, with this uh, soul. Eh? First of all, everybody tells that the soul is captivated in the body and it is waiting for this freedom. So once it dies, it is free. Then why again bring again the soul into captivity? No. What does the Bible say, Nibhadran? And moreover, you see, they claim that the soul is uh, without size, without shape, without weight, without anything. It doesn't have anything. It's invisible. Huh? You see, it can't be seen with our naked eyes. So as soon as a man dies without uh, even recognizing, it just passes away. You see, and countless, countless of souls can be captivated in a small box. Huh? We have seen no Aladdin. Aladdin ka chirag. If you rub, what will happen? Your soul will come off on a small lamp. A big soul. So many countless souls can be put into one small box. You see? Huh? Dear brethren, just think, today we have a lot of technology. Huh? Infrared, laser, alarm, MRI, etc. etc. Various types of technology where it is impossible. You see? For anything, even a small mosquito, to escape, uh, you see, from uh, e uh, any of these uh, systems. Uh, uh, even if there is a small mosquito entering, uh, you see, into the Reserve Bank safe locker, there will sound an alarm. We are living in such a world. Then how is it possible that this very important thing, a very important element from man, it escapes uh, from his uh, body and just disappears, uh, you see. And goes here and there. So how is this? Deep then you see, okay, oh, man, man souls go here and there. That's what many believe. Okay, but what about animals? Where do they go when they die? What about them? What does the Bible say? Let us read Ecclesiastes 3rd chapter 19 and 20. Ecclesiastes 3rd chapter 19 and 20. Uh, Ashish Mother, can you read Mother? Okay. Order uh, Kanwana. Ashish Mother, you, you can read from the screen also. 
Okay, but the screen is uh, not uh, clear okay. to me. So okay, 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 okay. No problem. Ecclesiastics uh, chapter uh, chapter nineteen and twenty, brother. Okay, I got it. For that which befalleth the sons of men, befalleth beasts, even one thing befalleth them. As the one dieth, so dieth the other. Yea, they have all one breath, so that a man hath no preeminence above a beast, for all is vanity. All go into one place, all are the dust, and all turn to dust again. Good. So, he says, you see, all go unto one place, and all are of the dust, and dust to return. Just imagine, see, dear brethren, uh, all go to one place, he seems, sir. Then if man goes to hell or heaven, then surely this animal also should go to hell or heaven. That's what the Bible says. Sir. Then imagine the condition about the people who are living in uh, hell eh? and heaven. What type of animals will be there? You see? So, these things uh, have to be studied from the Bible. Is it uh, such a way that uh, there is going to be animals even in uh, hell and heaven? So, what does the Bible say? Dear brethren, you see, uh, there are more than 40 verses in the Bible which uh, clearly says uh, that uh, uh, about soul, it clearly says that a uh, soul dies. There is no scripture in the Bible that says that the soul doesn't die. Uh, kindly pay attention. I repeat again. There is not a single verse in the Bible that says that the soul doesn't die. But there are more than 40 verses in the Bible which clearly tells that the soul dies, soul dies, soul dies. So let us look into a few verses sir. Ezekiel 18.4 and Ezekiel 18.20. Ezekiel 18.4 Behold, all souls are mine, as the soul of the Father, so also the soul of the Son in mine. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. Very good. Brother. The soul that sinneth, it shall die. You see? The soul that sinneth, it shall die. So the soul dies. Ah, next brother, read with the verse 20 also. Brother, huh? Ezekiel 18.20 The soul that sinneth, it shall die. The son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, and neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. Very good. So here what you say, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. Now, many people, you know, they tell, brother, correct, uh, soul dies. But who soul? The sinner. Uh, one who sins, their souls will die. But uh, we are not sinners. We are saved by Jesus Christ. Uh, you see, what does the Bible say? Apostle Paul said, how many people, uh, writers are there in this world? He uh? uh, tells uh, in Romans 3.10, no? there is none writers. Uh, you see, not even one. If there is none writers, not even one, then surely everybody's soul should die. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says in 1 John 1, 8, if we tell that we have no sin, even after accepting Christ, that means that we are deceiving ourselves. Read 1 John 1, 8, brother. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. You see, if we say that we have no sin, then we are deceiving ourselves. The truth is not in us. So even after accepting Christ, we are still remaining sinners. We are just imputed with the Christ righteousness. It is covered, our sins. But even then, you see, we are sinners and now our souls also die. Now read Psalms 22, 29, brother. Huh. All, this, this, all they that be fat upon the earth shall eat and worship. All they that go down to the dust shall bow before him, and none can help, none can keep alive his own soul. See, none can keep alive his own soul. You see, that means soul dies. So you can't keep your soul alive. Read on more verse. Psalms 35, 17, brother. Huh? But for how long will you look on? Rescue my soul from their destruction. Am I darling from the lions? Uh -huh. You see, rescue my soul from their destruction. That means soul can be destroyed. Therefore, you see, David is praying to God. Read James 5.20 also. Huh? Let him know that he which converteth 
converted the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sins. See? Eh? What? Uh? Shall save a soul from death. Oh, that means soul dies. Uh -huh. So soul can be saved. Therefore, uh, when uh, there is a huge prayer meeting where thousands of people are gathered, uh, they call, no, they tell, no. Uh, how many souls have come today? How many souls are saved? What does it mean? You see? That means, uh, you see, some invisible uh, uh, dead souls roaming here and there, they are saved. No. The people, the people, uh, how many have come here for uh, accepting Christ and uh, got saved? Uh, that's what it means. Uh, therefore, uh, you see, the general concept is that uh, the soul is invisible, even if you keep on, uh, you see, smiting it uh, with a sword. Uh, even if you chop off his head, uh, you see, again the dead will come and rejoin. Uh, you see, all this weird concept is there now about the souls. Uh, huh? You see? But uh, what does the Bible say? Uh, does the soul get hurt if he appears with a sword? Read <clears throat> Joshua 11, 11. And they smote all the souls that were therein with the edge of the sword, utterly destroying them. There was not any left to breathe, and he burned hazard with fire. You see, they smote all the souls therein with the edge of the sword. That means with the sword, all the souls were, you see, smote, cut. You see, dear brethren, they were smote. You see, they were killed. They were slaughtered. That means soul can be hurt with a sword. Read on my verse. Luke 2.35. Uh. And also thine own soul shall a sword pass through that the reasonings of many hearts may be revealed. Very good. You see? Huh? A sword shall pass through thine own huh? soul also. Oh, oh, that means soul will pass. Huh? So sword will pass through thy soul. Uh -huh. That means a soul can be hurt by a sword. It will hurt, it will feel. Many people think that, uh, you see, huh? a soul uh, is invisible. Even if you take a car and go on, even if you smash it also, nothing will happen. It will keep on laughing. <laughs> huh? That's the general thought of, uh, you see, soul. And many people tell that, oh, brother, if you want to recognize if it is a soul or not, if it is really a soul or a, you see, a human being, uh, you need to see the legs. Uh, because a soul doesn't have legs and a bloody won't be there. So you just pierce on sword and see nothing will happen. You hit, hurt it and see blood won't come. That is a clear sign that it is a soul. But what does the Bible say? Does the soul have blood? Let us read. Jeremiah 2.34, brother. Jeremiah 2.34. Also in thy scots is found the blood of the souls of the poor innocents. I have not found it by secret source, but upon all this. You see, in thy skirts is found the blood of the souls. Oh, oh that means souls is having blood. And that blood is found on the skirts, it seems. That means soul has flesh and blood. It is visible. Huh? What about food? Can the souls have food? Huh? How much food they can have? Many people think that the dead souls are they eat you. Oh, full uh, food. Once for all, they'll finish it off. Uh, what does the Bible say? Uh, read Exodus 12.4. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Hmm. You see, according to the number of the souls, Take a lamb. So that means souls can eat. How much? Everything. Every man according to his eating. Uh -huh. That means soul can eat limited food, not unlimited food. So souls also eat food. That means they have a digestive system like us. Uh, okay. But so many verses are there. But did Jesus tell anywhere that the soul dies? As he told anywhere... Uh, and Jesus has spoken so many truths, no? So definitely Jesus would have uh, spoken this truth also, no? Yes. Jesus has told clearly that the soul dies in Matthew 10, 28. 
ಹರಿಟ್ ಬಿದ್ದಾರ and fear not them which kill the body but are not able to kill the soul but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell aha fear not you see he said ha eh? but fear him those who are able to destroy both soul and body in hell it seems that means our soul can be destroyed body is also destroyed soul is also destroyed it seems so jesus clearly tells that the soul dies okay all our soul dies jesus also told the soul dies but what about jesus soul did he die i mean we will take no no brother how come jesus soul will die brother no he is forever and ever so his soul won't die at all now let us read matthew 26 38 then sit it then saith he unto them my soul is exceeding sorrowful even unto death tarry here and watch with me aha uh-huh. my soul is exceedingly sorrowful even unto death ho oh, ho oh. that means his soul is sorrowful to death that means it can die it has so much of uh, sorrow unto death uh, now this was is actually taken from the old testament in isaiah 53rd chapter now let us clearly read there Did, uh, did Jesus soul die or not? Read, brother. Isaiah 53, 10 and uh, Isaiah 53, 12, brother. Uh. Isaiah 53, 10. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall pros- prosper in his hands. Uh, uh, 12. Uh, uh, all right, brother. So, when thou shall make his soul an offering for sin jesus soul died actually god offered jesus soul as a sin offering to redeem the whole mankind so we have all studied this uh, subject of ransom you can see on the screen you see huh? what we did study uh, clearly uh, we have clearly studied that through one man sin entered into the world uh, and death uh, through sin and this death uh, has uh, passed upon everybody for all have sinned so to redeem this entire mankind what did uh, eh? jesus do jesus died on the cross how to redeem all the souls to save all the souls jesus soul died he was crucified on the cross he was offering his soul as a sin offering to redeem mankind of the land so his soul died now read verse 12 also brother ha huh. therefore will i divide him a portion with the great and he shall divide the spoil with the strong because he had pound out poured out his soul unto death and he was numbered with the transgressors and he bare the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors very good see huh? he had poured out his soul unto death are very clear no jesus poured his soul unto where death so jesus soul died this is what is quoted in matthew 26 38 my soul is exceedingly sorrowful unto death so jesus soul also died so dear brethren these are just a few verses but there are lot and lot of lot of verses we clearly says that the soul dies so if the soul dies then naturally the question comes to our mind is then what is the meaning of soul what does the bible say about soul you see now what is the meaning that's what the question comes to our mind dear brethren the bible doesn't say that man has a soul bible doesn't say that one but the bible says that man himself is a soul so where is it given you see that is given to us in uh, the creation of the first man that is the first time where the word soul is used related to man let us read that one brother genesis 2 7 brother huh? and the lord god formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and a man become a living soul mm. see god created man from the dust of the ground 
and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and what happened a man became a living soul oh living soul so before that one what was man actually it was a dead soul you see huh? man was created from the dust of the ground you see and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life then what happened you see man became to live what is the meaning of that man was created from the dust of the ground does it mean that he was made like a doll and god uh, breathed into his nostrils breath of life Oof. no dust of the ground means dear brethren the chemical compounds in this earth you see god used all these things uh, to create mankind uh, you see man is having so much of fat you see there are the two types of fat no uh, good and bad fat fat is there in his uh, uh, man uh, you know so much of fat is there that uh, they can prepare one bar soap with the man's fat it seems and uh, does man have water yes man has so much of water uh, that he can fill under liter barrel it seems and does man have iron yes if we have iron deficiency what will happen uh, our lower bone will get uh, uh, weak uh, so iron is also there uh, um, so iron is also important uh, so you can prepare and manufacture a two inch nail with the human being it seems sir and as he got lime yes he's got so much of lime that we can whitewash a 10 by 10 room it seems sir as he got uh, phosphorus uh, sulfur uh, lead yes all these chemicals are there in mankind dear brethren so using all these chemicals only god created man that is what it means sir when god created him from the dust of the ground means what he used all the chemical compounds sir, from this earth and created man in his image in his image and breath and tissue says the breath of life sir. you see so imagine if you are not feeling well if you are sick what do the doctors recommend us sir? they give us some tablets they give us some syrup or some injection no so what is there in that uh, tablet sir in the composition if you see Uh, backside they would have written carbohydrates, vitamin, uh, uh, potassium, magnesium. You see, so where where are all these things? Uh? Why uh, doctor is giving all these things? Uh? Because all these things are minerals found from the dust. Uh, it is found in the ground. Uh. So these things are necessary in a correct uh, you see proportion for mankind. Uh, you see to sustain. Uh, and uh, imagine when we are not feeling well. Uh, Ah, huh? we are uh, feeling very sick. If you go to doctor, what will doctor tell us? What will he recommend us to eat food? Huh? Will he tell us uh, go and take uh, two kg chicken, one kg mutton, easily prepare kaima, superly eat biryani? Will he tell? No. What will he tell? Don't eat non-vegetarian. You you no 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 no. You are very weak. Go take vegetables. Uh huh. Go take good fruits. Apple. pomegranate orange ah uh, banana eat very good eat why because these are things which are rich in proteins vitamins now where do we find all these things are uh? is all found in the earth dear brethren it is with the same earth chemicals and all composition that man was created that's what it means uh, you know ah uh, man uh, how many bones a uh, man has man has 206 bones and female has 205 bones and the largest of the bone is our thigh bone and the smallest bone is our the bone which is inside our ear such wonderfully god had created man read psalms 139 14 brother psalms 139 mm. 14 i will praise thee for i am fearfully and wonderfully made marvelous are thy works and that my soul knoweth right well Oh, you see, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Uh, you see, I'll praise thee. Fearfully, wonderfully, wonderfully, man was created, dear brethren. How was he created? From the dust of the ground. You see, and uh, God uh, uh, created the body. You see, body means what? Uh, it had eyes but could not see. It had legs but could not walk. It had hands but could not work. It had everything. it had heart it had lungs you see everything blood also was there but nothing functioned that was the body only body was there then what did god give the breath of life 
when God gave the breath of life to Adam, that is the time that man became a living soul. You see? So, this has to be very clearly understood. See? For a man to live, that means for a soul to exist, there are two things required. You see? Body itself is not a soul. Body was there, but it had no life of itself. So, body is not a soul. You see? And is a breath of life a soul? No. The breath of life of itself did not have life. You see, that individually is not a soul at all. So, both combined together only is the soul. Both combined together in the correct proportion, body plus breath of life, then man became a living soul. Once this breath of life uh, entered into Adam, his eyes began to see. Blood began to pump. Hands and legs began to move. He began to think. The lungs began to function and uh, you see, take in oxygen, give out carbon dioxide. He became a living soul before that he was a dead soul. See, uh, a very clear example is uh, like a TV. You see, a TV is like just a, you see, a body. Huh? Just because uh, you buy a TV, will it function? Huh? If you just uh, put a TV just like that one, will it work? No. So for a program to come, you see, what is required? Current is required. Similarly, for a soul to live, huh? what is there? What is required? Uh, current is required. Now, what is this current? Huh? As for the TV, current is required. Similarly, the breath of life is required for a man to function and live. You see? So, similarly, once the TV is plugged in properly, what will happen immediately? The program will come. Uh -huh. So, for the program to come, correctly, these two things are required. Body and current. So, similarly, for a soul, body plus, you see, God's breath of life is required. Now, in our Bible, what they have done is that in Genesis first chapter and second chapter, a lot of places this word soul, 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 soul comes. The breath of life, breath of life comes. Breathing creature comes. But uh, because of the misconception, the translators who thought that the soul doesn't die, as soon as the man dies, it goes here and there. When they translated with this wrong idea, they have translated in all the places as, uh, you see, instead of uh, uh, the living soul, they put it as living creature. Let us read a few examples. Brother. Genesis 2.19, brother. Genesis 2.19. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and fowl of the air and brought them into Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. You see? Every living creature, every fall of air. actually, that word always should come in the original. No? It will come like this one. Every soul of the air, every soul of the beast of the field, every soul of the living creature. Ah, that's how actually origin probably comes. But here, because of the misconception, they were translated wrongly. Now, how do we check it? Now, how do we study it? Today, we have a blessing of this technology. You see, huh? now we have the blessings of the concordance. Uh -huh. Now, concordance, if you take and see, we will come to know all the Hebrew and Greek word of the word. You see, huh? soul. Uh -huh. So, if you take those concordance, even if you don't have the concordance book, we can search it in the Google and see. The concordances are there. In Hebrew, the word used for soul is nefesh. See, in the New Testament, which is that word? The equivalent word. You see, what we use it uh, in English uh, as soul. In Hebrew, actually that word is called as nefesh. The correct meaning of the word is a breathing creature. And that is uh, Strong's concordance number 5315. And this comes 436 times and it is translated 36 types uh, in the Bible. Even only in the Old Testament, I'm telling you. Now in the New Testament, if you come, the same word 
Fasola in New Testament is Suki. Suki means what? Breathing creature. Same word, same meaning. Uh, strong sound card number 5590. It comes 56 times in the Bible. And they have translated four different types in the Bible. Now I'll give you an example. See, let us read Matthew 10 45. Brother. Matthew 10 45. Brother. Read with huh? For even the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for men. Hmm. Son of Man came not to minister, but to, huh? came not to be ministered, but to minister and give his life a ransom for many. Actually, that word life is uh, uh, from a uh, uh, Greek word, uh, uh, nephisha. You see? Huh? He, uh, Suki. What uh, it should actually come? It should come as who gave his soul a ransom for many. This is what we read in Isaiah 53, 12. No? He offered his soul unto death. Uh, uh -huh. And uh, I read one more verse. Brother. Mark 8, chapter brother, 35 and 37. Cleanly concentrated on this verse. How they have uh, translated uh, in the same sentence in two different ways. Mark 8, chapter 35 to 37. For who, for whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospels, the same shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his own for his soul? Mm. See, here they are cleverly translated. If you concentrate on verse 35 and 36, it says life, life. Whosoever will save his life shall lose it. You see? But whosoever shall uh, lose his life for the gospel's sake shall save it himself. Now, imagine this 35 and 36 verse is speaking about life only. But now suddenly if you come to verse 37, what is the verse they used? Instead of using life, they are using a soul. It is the same Greek word. You see? Huh? Greek, same Greek word, suki. Here, in the same sentences, two different translations are used here. Why did not they use soul in all the places? They could have used life at least in all the places. Why? Because they had the conception. The soul doesn't die. The soul goes here and there. So, if here, if you put that... Uh, huh? A soul, uh, they'll get an idea now who oh, soul dies. Yeah? Therefore, as per their idea, they have put uh, what shall uh, uh, gain for a man if he uh, conquers the whole world and loses his own soul. Uh -huh. So, lose his own soul. So, saving your soul is important. Uh, that is the reason they have translated uh, like this, sir. Uh, now see, Mark uh, 10 45. So we read just now, read now. The son of man came uh, not to be minister, but to minister and give a ransom for all. Ransom. You see, now the Hebrew word for spirit, you see, the breath of life, we said, no, that God created man, put the dust of the ground, and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. That word, breath of life, in Hebrew is ruwa. And in English, it is properly translated as spirit. Okay? And uh, the actual meaning of it uh, is uh, the breath of life, the invisible power. Strong's Concordance number 7307. And the same Greek word used for uh, spirit is pneuma. You see, pneuma means what? Again, something which is invisible. Huh? Uh, breath like something. Huh? Strong's uh, Concordance number uh, 4151. You see, pneuma means what? Uh, invisible uh, breath of life. Uh, therefore, we have no uh, in uh, where physics, we have kinetic studies, uh, kinetic study, pneumatic study. Pneumatic means what? Uh, something related to air. So, uh, it is uh, something like uh, this current only. See, uh, current. Can we see current? Uh, can we see the current flowing in the wire? Oh, see, see, the current is coming there. Oh, it's going there. Can we see? No. Same way it is with the spirit. The spirit is something which is invisible, which nobody can see. See, in the road, if you go, there's so many electric poles are there, so many wires are there. So, in that one, current will be what? It will be traveling here and then. But can we see it? 
we can't see it but we can feel it you see we can experience it it is power it has got its power but yet it is invisible but when we put the electronic gadget then only we will come to know that the current is there or not similarly it is with this spirit the breath of life it is something which is invisible yet powerful see let us uh, see how various types uh, this word is translated in the bible john 424 brother how the same word spirit is translated in different way in john 424 brother huh? god is a spirit and they that worship him must worship him in his spirit and in truth hmm see god is a spirit is him sir huh? same numa word numa so they that worship him should worship him in spirit and in truth what does it mean god is a spirit god is a spirit means god is invisible so if god is invisible does it mean that we can't see him he doesn't have any power at all no he is invisible but yet powerful god can't be seen but yet his presence can be felt everywhere he is powerful that is what it means now remember read one more verse brother john 663 brother it is the spirit that quickens the flesh profit nothing the words that i speak unto you they are spirit and they are life the spirit that quicken the body profit nothing uh, the words which i speak unto you what are they simsa they are spirit ha uh -huh. how come uh, jesus words is the spirit what did it actually mean it means that his words are invisible yet powerful jesus spoke so many things but can we see that words could we see the words that is coming from here they going and all no dear brethren so we can't see but yet it is powerful that is what is means you see now also see i am speaking now can you see my words see it's coming like this is coming like this is going like this no it is invisible but yet uh, there is power for this words or not yes these words has got power a power to convert a man a power to change a man even a power to destroy a man also so much of power is there in this ah uh, uh, words and therefore this is invisible at powerful read second timothy 17 brother for god had not given us the spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind ah uh, god has given us the spirit of sound mind ah uh, uh, therefore he say na sound mind mind means what uh, can we see the mind nobody can see the mind it's invisible it is powerful huh? God, some people were scolding and telling you don't have brains at all what do you mean by that one huh? brains means you can you see the brain <laughs> huh? who can see the brain it is invisible it is intellectual it is our thoughts now read acts 1921 also brother after these things were ended paul purposed in the spirit when he had passed through macedonia and achaia to go to jerusalem saying after i have been there i must also see rome hmm paul purposed in the spirit paul decided in spirit that he should pass through macedonia and achaia and go to rome now where did uh, he decide uh, what did the uh, bible say he decided in the spirit is spirit means what huh? he did in spirit means what it means mind uh, in his heart in his feelings uh, that is very thought and he decided uh, you see to go in such and such way dear brethren similarly uh, this brain this feelings all this are various translation of the same word, word uh, you see new ma dear brethren therefore this is how the bible is been translated dear brethren so without a proper study we can never understand this one at all and uh, one more thing is that this breath of life you see he is not oxygen this is not oxygen but oxygen is there in this breath of life but it is not only oxygen it is breath of life it is not only breath you see like for example if uh, somebody uh, is serious uh, doctor pumps in oxygen will he live again no if that was the case everybody will keep oxygen in their house if in the case they die they put the oxygen into the mouth and live no 
ஆக்சிஜன் இஸ் நாட் த ஓன்லி திங் தட் இஸ் இம்பார்ட்டன்ட் ஆக்சிஜன் அலாங் வித் ஆக்சிஜன் ஒன் மோர் திங் இஸ் ரிக்வயர்ட் வாட் இஸ் தட் வேணா த பிரேத் ஆஃப் லைஃப் த பிரேத் ஆஃப் லைஃப் மீன்ஸ் வாட் த ரைட் டு லீவ் ஆன் தி சர்த் த பிரேத் விச் ஹேஸ் லைஃப் ரைட்ஸ் இன் இட் திஸ் ஒன் is very very important therefore dear brother this is what god gave actually to adam what did god do god created man in his own image from the dust of the ground you see now by using all the chemical compounds and breathed into his nostrils what did he breathe what did he breathe this you see a breath of life this is not oxygen because there was a lot of oxygen when adam was created but the right to live so dear brethren so today what we studied is that the soul dies and uh, what is the meaning of soul a soul is composed of two things a body and a breath of life okay that is uh, translated as spirit also so the body and the breath of life combined together come together in a proper way only a man becomes a living soul so we'll stop it here so this class will continue for another uh, four to five weeks and these are very important classes what four to five weeks we are taking so request not to miss these classes so it will be a continuation and uh, i request uh, to wait till the last class before you ask any questions or any doubts i'm sure all your questions all your doubts let it be anything everything will be cleared by end of all these classes so mm-hmm. i request you to please wait but still if you have any doubts any questions if you want to ask you can ask any questions any doubts for that 